Hello everyone. All right, I see we have like four or five people over here only, so um, I guess this workshop is not as uh, challenging as the other ones. Um, <coughs> let me start the recording locally, and it's kind of it's getting recorded over here too. Um, the workshop is about member functions and privacy, so you're essentially um, uh, creating. Uh, um, classes and add uh, functions to it to uh, accommodate the actions that the class are supposed to uh, supposed to get so uh, for the first part of the thing for lab one um, what you need to do is uh, to create a class called CC in a module cc.hncc.cpp it's supposed to hold the credit card information of a per of someone uh, it's the it holds the card holder holders name in a dynamic C string, um, month and a year of expiry as short integers, and the credit card number by itself as an as an unsigned long long integer. Um, private methods that it has methods that uh, are only accessible to the methods public other methods of the uh, of the class. Uh, first one is validate, which gets the name, card numbers, and the, the CVV, um, expiry month and expiry year, and validates those things. So name should uh, be um, not null and minimum of two characters long. Uh, card number <coughs> should be between these two values. CVV should be a three-digit number. And expiry month between 1 and 12. And expiry year between 22 and 32. And it will return true if all are the conditions over there are, are met. Otherwise, it's going to return false. PRN number uh, is another private function that is used in uh, display of the uh, display um, command method of the class. Uh, its job is to format the credit card number from one long, long integer into four packs of four-digit numbers, and um, uh, it's it can be done mathematically pretty simple so what you do you um, first uh, uh, divide the number by these many zeros and a one beside it so it's going to the, the, the it's going to give you this as answer and after you're done you do a modulus to these many zeros and one beside it and that's going to give you this number after getting that number you divide that number to these many zeros with a one beside it that gives you this number and then you get again this number and you do a modulus with these many zeros at one beside and you keep going like that right to the end and it's going to give you all the things that you want to print uh, one by one and that's print number um, are we okay down to this point. Hi, Farhad. I have a question. Hello. Hi. <clears throat> um, regarding the print number function, mm -hmm. uh, if if there is zero in it, uh, the zero will be chunked when we print it. Yes, that's why you have cin dot width and cin dot fill. So you print every pack that comes in, except from the first one that is for sure has the forty over there. But for mm -hmm. the other one, you do C in with four and C in fill zero, right justified. C in dot set. So, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So let me just, for the, uh, I, I've actually prepared something to show code over here. So, what you do, <coughs> so you go C in <coughs> with four, C in fill zero c in dot set f ios right justified and then you print whatever you have c out let's say three okay or 32 or 32 and you have to make sure that after this it is always uh, with only affects the next one so what you need to do, you use, you have to always set the fill back to what they are. After you are done with all your printouts, set the fill back to that one. 
and onset F to right. So C in, sorry, why did I put C in over here? These are our C out. <laughs> sorry, C out, C out, C out, C out, C out. Yeah, so you have to do it. So you put C out back to an original thing. Somebody's taking a picture. <laughs> These are recorded. <laughs> it's going to be posted immediately after. You don't think need to take a picture. Anyways, so if you run this, uh, the outcome will, will show you what's going to be. See, it's 0, 0, 0032. I hope that that answers the question. So I'm going to put this one over here. Uh, a packs of four digit numbers. Uh, Cyprit, go ahead. You have a question. Yes, sir. Why do we have to use the fill function and the width? Because we are just printing it, right? Yeah, you're just printing it. So let's let's say I want to so let's let's do what. So we want to print four uh, credit card, four packs for credit card credit card number, correct? Let's say your credit card the four comes out like this. So it's C out. First one is four zero. 4098 okay the second one is the second one is 32 the other one is 102233 three, and this one is 3 right if you print these values and we don't have an L over here we have a space so this one's got to be a space Uh, it's going to be space, just a second, and this is going to be a space, and this is going to be... But sir, uh, aren't we going to print it just when after we do the validation? It means that it's a correct uh, credit card number. Th this number, right? this is the number that I'm breaking, so it's C out. Four zero nine eight zero zero three two one zero three three zero 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 three, and this is a perfectly valid number. Correct. When you print that, if you print, oh, sorry, I put it in the wrong file. Just a second. So if I print these, the first one is going to show as this, and printing them out will going to be this. This is going to get printed like 32. This is going to be printed at uh, 1033. This is going to get printed at 3. Got it? Yes, sir. All right. So to prevent that, then you have to have those fills and set right ones and width. Uh, so if you if you do it for the first one, that's fine. So if I put it over here, now if I put over here, and I print it out, this is what you're gonna have. Oh, one more time. Oh, oh, I set the fill back. My apologies. This has to be at the end. Now this is going to be the output. Okay? <clears throat> so, that's that. Um, any other question? Professor, I have a question. Sanchez, go ahead. Uh, so this function doesn't take any, uh, uh, doesn't return anything or take any parameters. So how are we going to use it? Isn't it a member function? Uh, yeah, it's a member. Oh, okay, doesn't okay. have access to the credit card number. <laughs> yeah, 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 I got it. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so that's that. Let's go to the next one. No problem. Yes. Um, from what I understood, the width function is setting a minimum, right? Yes. If it grows more than that, it ignores the width. Um, is there a another function like width that sets the maximum? No, you have to do it mathematically. 
Oh, okay, okay, Max, got it. Because Thank you. Uh, the reason it's and it's exactly the same thing in 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 C language, okay. Okay. What, what they say is that it's always more important to have the data properly printed than properly formatted. Okay. Right. So for this workshop, are we allowed to use printf instead of cout? No. You're no. Using printf. How do you how are you gonna do it with? No, you are doing cout. I just did it with okay. cout, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah. I just did it with C out. You're not allowed to use print printf is gone. Bye bye. You're not using okay. printf ever again because you're not studying C again. Okay. Okay. Got it. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. No problem. All right. Anyone else before we continue? All right. So that's that. So public methods. You have a set. This set sets it to a set safe empty state. Uh sets all the values to zero and our pointer. What cleanup does, it deallocates the, uh, deallocates the uh, name for the credit card, deallocates uh, the uh, and calls the set to put everything back in a safe, safe, uh, uh, safe empty state. Is empty tells you if the name pointer attribute is null, uh, if it is null, it returns true. If it's not returns fault, set first cleans up the object, and if the validate on these return true, then it's gonna dynamically copy the name and set the attributes and everything. So it sets it only if everything's valid. Um, if any of the arguments uh, valid, nothing will be set. Okay, but you got to make sure that you clean up. So if somebody passes invalid information, your object is going to go back to a safe empty state, essentially. Read, uh, uh, because we don't think we have any, anybody more than 71 characters, uh, what you're going to do is uh, read the, uh, the name, uh, up to 70 characters, you, uh, use get line to do that, seeing get line, and uh, have the 71 character as a local variable inside read. So uh, your uh, read function will <coughs> essentially um, first clean up, then it's going to uh, ask for the called hoarder's name and do a get line. Um, up to 70 characters and then keeps reading using C in. After everything is done, we hope that user enters everything properly. But at the end of that entry, we're going to check C in. If C in is valid, which means none of the, uh, if none of the readings failed, then it's going to set it. So use the set function to set all the values. If it was not, if it failed, it just clears it. In any case, you have to ignore at the end and make sure ignore uh, flush the keyboard and uh, to return if read read successfully or not, you can simply return uh, uh, is empty being not equal to null, uh, not equal to false. So if is empty returns false after this function, it means read was successful. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, it is not because first you clean up, then you start reading, then you set. So first it cleans up the, the, the credit card information. Then if everything is successful, it tries to, see, to set it. If it's not successful because it's cleaned up, it's in a safe empty state. And if it is successful, it tries to set it and it's set. If it's not valid information, set will set it to a safe empty state. So in any case, if read fails, uh, you're going to have uh, the object in a safe empty state. And that's what uh, read returns. It, it's the opposite of is empty. And that's how read works. Any questions about the read? It is all good. Is it all uh, good? Is Excuse is set. Okay, sure. Let's go one by one. Okay. Okay. Uh, is 71 the length of the name? No, 70 is the length of the name. Okay. See, no, yeah. no, no. Wait, 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 wait. 70 is not the length of the name. It's dynamic. 71 is the maximum length that you can get from entry. 
Okay, so um, so it should be seventy one plus one, right? No, it's seventy. See. Seven. Okay. Yeah, so, I got so, it. So, uh, mm -hmm. The reason that is, so, uh, let me just put it over there. So um, assuming that the names are not longer than 70 characters. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yes, okay. I got it. This function will attempt to read yada, 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 yada. So what happens is that get line should get 71 as an argument. Okay. Yes. That's how get line works. Um, mm -hmm. My sincere apologies. I'm going to pause the um pause the uh recording and i go i have to go for a second um, um and um, and come back sorry just give me two seconds i'm gonna pause and i'll be back in like three to five minutes my apologies let me, let me record let me record let me record okay go ahead again go ahead in the last scene dot ignore uh, how many characters we have to flush and uh, which delim delimiting character we have to uh, use as the second argument. Um, which which one you're talking about? The, this one. The scene dot ignore. Uh, uh, yeah. No. Uh, at, at the end, in any case, flush the keyboard using ignore. So it says um, the last second so, line. So, so, you uh, you uh, yeah. so you're talking about this line, correct? Last second. No, no, no. The last second line. In any case, flush. The oh, keyboard using oh, when, you, when in any case you I said in any case flush the keyboard whenever that is I don't know ignore 10,000 characters up to backslash in that means you want to flush the keyboard flushing keyboard always end to backslash in right 10,000 uh, and yeah. backslash in will do I don't think anybody's going to enter more than okay. 10,000 characters but for here you're going to be yeah. just ignoring one character because it has a slash between them and it doesn't have to be slash. If they put over yeah. there something dash, anything that is a delimiter for a number, they can put, I don't know, 12A23. And still, it's okay because that A is going to get ignored between the two. Uh, Cyprit. Professor, can you like give us an example of how can we validate uh, the C in? Because it's going to throw an error, right? If some if like the cardholder name fails, so it's gonna throw an error. Like it's not gonna pro, uh, prompt uh, the credit ask, card. May I it. ask if you are in my class or you are you in my class? Are you my student? No, sir. I am uh, in. Oh, okay. Class. Uh, so if that's the case, I can redirect you to uh, uh, one of the sessions that we have. That's a long thing to go through, and it is. Yeah. So let me just tell you it quickly what happens. If CN fails in any situation, it cannot read. For example, get line exceeds 71 characters. For example, somebody wants to enter um, a number, instead put characters. Any unexpected thing happens to CN, it fails. When it fails, it goes into a fail mode and becomes deactivated, which means no other CN will ever do anything else until you clear its status. Got it that, that down to this point? Yes, sir. Okay. So anytime you want, and because of that, if you do a back-to-back -back read, you can stack all your C-ins back-to-back. And at the end, check the C-in. If C-in fails in the first one, it's going to skip the rest. It's not going to do anything. So one check at the end shows one of these things failed. Which one? You don't know. And we don't care. We just want to see if it failed or not. Okay? So that's how it works. Mm. Okay, it's, sir. Thank yeah, you. Um, let me see. Uh, I would love to be able to go through it, but uh, it's kind of out of the scope of... The, um, so the other, um, should I put this example up too? Um, well, this is essentially... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to... The other one is there. So... When you're doing, so let's do it like that. I'm going to say if, uh, I'm going to say read, uh, or let's say int read. I want to read a number, read an integer. I'm going to go over here, integer num, and I'm going to go see out, enter a number. Then in here, I'm going to say uh, uh, do. And in here, I'm going to say while 
uh, how do I write it to be simple and straightforward? Uh, pa -pa 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 -pa. Uh, I'm going to say done is false. Boolean done is false. Now, now I'm going to write while not done. And here I'm going to say cn into num. So it tries to read the number and we're going to make the number zero. Okay? So it's going to try to read the number. If it reads the number, fine. If it doesn't, cn is going to fail. So I have to say if cn.fail, if cn failed, then what I need to do is to first apologize that I did something wrong. So I'm going to say cn.clear. That means, okay, I know you failed. I acknowledge. Now throw away all the garbage. So I'm going to say cn.ignore. 10,000 characters and backslash n. So that throws all the garbage that it could not read. And probably I'm going to say see out bad number. Try again. Okay. So try again. And in here else, if it doesn't fail, I'm going to say done is true. Now in here, I'm going to say return num. You see this? So now in here, if I uh, write integer value, I can say value is set to read and see out you, you entered value. And if I run the program, you will see that it won't let me, oh, that's num. It would, it would not let me go until I do it. So if I put something wrong in here, it's going to say bad number, try again. I put, uh, I have to put uh, something that it can read. Uh, so I can now put 23 over here. It's going to say you entered 23. Got it? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to say mm, B simple C in. C in and fail. Dot CPP. So you're going to have the code over there. All these codes are going to be in the review code in workshop three. Okay. So anything that you see in here is going to end up in here. You see that you have DIY lab. You're going to have overview codes. It's going to be right in there. So no need to take pictures. <laughs> All right. So that's that. Let's go back to uh, the description. So that's that. So for display, we have two different ways that the display is going to work over here. Our display either works as a row or it works as uh, a form version. So form means a descriptive version. So if row is zero or less, it means you are supposed to print this in one row. So you show the row at the beginning first. And then after showing the row, you're going to show the values one by one. OK, so and, and it explains exactly row, right justified in three spaces, name, which it tells you exactly how to print it. OK, <clears throat> and this is going to be the outcome. So if row is <clears throat> greater than one, it's not greater than one, it's row greater than zero. Why did I say one? I think if row is greater than zero. Oh, wait. Give me a second. Give me a second. So no, row should be greater than, if row is greater than zero, not one. So I have to fix that. If row is greater than zero, it does this. If it's less than or equal zero, it does that. OK, good. So uh, yeah, so that was a mistake. That's fixed. Uh, <clears throat> And if row is less than zero, then you show everything uh, like a descriptive thing. Name is this, card number is that, and so on and so forth. So it is, it is displayed like this. If the, the uh, object is invalid, so uh, where are I? If the object is invalid, if it's empty, you print invalid credit card record and you're done with it. Are we okay with display? <laughs> All right, and the rest are not replying. Therefore, 
I hope they're okay. All right. <clears throat> so that's the tester program. It runs, uh, it essentially uh, opens a file, reads some f uh, information from a file, and uh, just gives it up to you. So, and the file I'm, I'm using, uh, ifstream, ifstream over here, you don't need to know it. Uh, just know that ifstream works exactly like iStream, which means works exactly like C in, but instead of keyboard, it reads it from a file. Anything you do to C in, you can do it to file in. You see, I'm doing file in get line, file in everything that file in is doing, that's exactly what C in does. And it receives it from uh, a comma separated value thingy, I believe. And um, let me see if I have it here. Yeah, so it reads it from here. And that's the formats that it's receiving it, uh, reading it from. There we go. So it reads up to here, then it reads the number, then it reads that one. So essentially uses your CC to print it up line by line. Um, and if you have uh, developed everything properly, it works perfectly and uh, uh, no memory leak is going to happen. Uh, any questions down to here? Yes, separate. Go ahead. Sahiprit. <laughs> if I can pr pronounce it properly, you said you have questions. No, sorry. Oh, I, mean, I said all good. I, 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 it was a mistake. Yeah, my, no, it was my mistake. I should say over the answer, not all is good. Answer. So, any questions? Professor, can I ask one question? You can ask 50 questions. Go ahead, Marco. What's up? Yeah, I'm just wondering what is mean by boil clean up. So, it, it say it will first the allocator card holder's name i don't understand this sentence professor sorry you don't know what is the allocating card holder's name yeah well what does it mean it's delete the pointer that means yeah deallocate means to deallocate memory right so all oh, right then so, i understand that yes so, okay so you want me to give you an example or you're good if have example it will be the best okay Thank sure, you, sure. so so uh, what happens is this so i have character pointer name that's null ptr so name is empty right now it's not pointing to anything then i'm going to say name is equal to new so yeah so new say character uh, i don't know 71 so now it's allocated yeah. now i'm going to say cn.get line uh, name and 71 and now I'm gonna say over here uh, see out hello name of course in here I have to say if cn if cn did not fail Scene is polymorphic. If you just put it in an if statement, it returns if it's successful or not. So if C in, then hello name. Otherwise, I'm going to say, uh, see out your name is too long. And then at the end, I'm going to say, see, uh, uh, delete exactly how I allocated name. Okay. And that's it. All it. Thank you, Professor. No problem. So that's uh, C deallocate dot CPP. All right. Uh, what else? Let me see. Where are we? Uh, there you go. Why is it up there? Come down. All right. So that's that one. Now uh, the DIY uh, is. Uh, the DIY is to create uh, a name tag uh, and a tag list. So what happens is this. Where's the DIY? Yeah. So it says uh, uh, your task for DIY section is to create a name tag class to hold the name up to 50 characters, not dynamic. So remember, this is not dynamic and print it, print it with a frame around it. So essentially, you, it holds the, it, it, you give it a name and it prints the frame around it. So first you see what is the length, 
you put that link one space before one space after you put a line and a star before and after and another line underneath and you're done okay or it can be printed with a bigger frame uh, but it's going to be left justified so these are the things that you can so uh, again uh, your name tag should be able to hold the name should be able to um, and if nothing is mentioned it should go around the name exactly as what it is if the length is set to a specific thing more than that then you have to print it print it more than that that's the class that you are creating so it uh, that's it and um, let me see if there's any um, uh, yeah the only thing that we ask you to do for name tag that we needed is set the rest you have to do it yourself whatever you want to put in it any type of method you want to add to it to take care of it it's your cho it's your choice and your your uh, design okay so that's the name tag any questions about the name tag <laughs> We have three no's and the rest are quiet so if, if probably you don't have any questions either okay all right next thing is going to be the tag list so tag list in the other hand we need lots of stuff because we use it in our name tag list has a set that sets it to a name, uh, safe empty state when it's not set to anything it has a num okay that first cleans up the class and then dynamically creates an array of num name tags so when i set num to 50 it's going to create 50 name tags in itself dynamically okay when you say add okay it adds the name tag to the next position in the uh name tag array dynamic name tag array and it's going to keep track of how many but it cannot go more than num that's the number of tags that it can get when you say print it prints all the name tags the catch is that when you are adding the name tag you have to keep track of the length of the name and you have to set the length of all the name tags to the biggest name that comes in because you want all the name tags to be printed in a same line so essentially when your program is running your program's output should be as such as you see everything should be exactly the same size and this size should be the size of the biggest one over here and these are all simpsons characters i don't know if anybody watches simpsons but this is what it is so uh, it just uh, sets everything to the to the length of the the names and um yeah print does that and clean up um, obviously deallocate the name tags and put the tag list back to a safe empty state and this is the tester program for it you these are the minimum functions that we need because these are the things that i have in my tester anything else you want to add to your name tag uh, to it to your name list uh, that's your choice and you can do it if you want uh, any questions about uh, the name tag sanjit go ahead it was a mistake sir. no problem all right uh -huh. So that's it. That's uh, workshop three. And uh, yeah, um, this one is not a difficult one. This one is an easy one. Hopefully it's going to give you a break because the previous workshops apparently was very challenging. Uh, I have designed workshop three and four myself to make it easier. So hopefully uh, we're going to, um, you're going to be okay with this one. Any questions before we continue, before we leave? Any question one? Any question two? Any question three? All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to push the changes over here and I'm going to call the, uh, this one version. Oh, I have to pull first, I believe. Shoot, because I think I changed something over there. Now I have to merge these two. All right, let me, I should have pulled it first. Let me just copy everything. Uh -huh. um, the changes uh, somebody told me what was the change uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna discard the changes and pull and then push for and then uh, edit it again so lab 3 
lab three i'm gonna do a poll tortoise get poll commit your changes ah oh, we can't do that if i commit the changes i'm gonna get a conflict so let me revert i don't want to go through conflict fixing i'm gonna go tortoise get revert and now pull okay so let me edit it again uh, somebody told me uh, a change I made the change uh, what was the change it was 71 I think um, so yeah you changed from 71 to 70 yes and if row greater than zero instead of greater yes, yes, than yes. One. thank you thank you so let me do do it quickly over here so it's gonna be version 1.1 I'm gonna call it version 1.1 over view session changes or corrections so 71 71 71 did we pass it let me search 71 yeah assuming that the names are not longer than 70 characters that's that one and the other one was row greater than one that was essentially greater than zero and that's it so save it and let me push it and then we're done so I'm gonna add all the things that I've done right now I'm gonna add it too so I'm gonna close this one also uh, this is close this one so I'm going to say commit version 1.1 and overview session codes and let's select everything commit and push and that's that there we go so if you go to the website right now if you actually go to the OP244 if you go to OP244 website you can go to workshops workshop 3 you will see that the overview codes are there and the examples are there for you to to see uh, and also the next next week uh, I'm gonna it will gonna go back to what we had for the overview sessions which is going to be uh, Tuesday morning at 8 55 that's when we are going to do the overview um, have yourself a beautiful day and uh, uh, good luck with the workshops and everything else bye everyone